everybody, it's Brock, and we got a brand new episode of All About. Hope y'all have been having a great weekend. Starting to get cold where we're at now, so we're starting to bundle up. Today, we are talking all about my all-time favorite coral. I've had one for years. It's by far one of my favorites to have. This is all about the green bubble coral. Now, we're going to talk about a bunch of different variations of color on these guys, but for Care Guide, all of them across the board are all the same way. Now this is an LPS coral, which means a large polyp stony coral. So that means they're going to have this rigid, hard skeleton. And out of that skeleton will come these fleshy polyps. They get larger and larger throughout the day as the sun comes up. And then over time, as they do get bigger, those polyps continue to grow and grow and grow. So you end up with this just massive LPS coral in the center of your tank. Prices on them, you'll normally spend about $100 on them. Nowadays, to get one that's about two to three inches long, one that is larger than that, you'll end up spending more and more. The one you're seeing in the video is one I've had for years. It's probably five years old by now. And so you're looking at about 12 inches wide or more. He's really big. He does great. He's right in the center of the tank, so he's got plenty of room to swim around in and have a good time while eating throughout the day. Coloring is also affects the price. Normally, the white and tan colored ones will be cheaper. And then once you start getting into those really nice greens and blues and purple variations, they'll definitely cost you some more. Hair level, they're actually really easy. It's not much for these guys. It's mainly just making sure the tank is ready for them. Temperature, you want to keep it 72 to 78. You know, I like to keep my reef right on 78. That keeps everybody super happy. It is starting to get colder where we're at. So these colder months, make sure you got a heater in that tank. In my tank, I got a little Jaeger heater. It's really great because it gets the tank up to that temperature and then shuts off. And then as the temperature drops throughout the day, it'll turn back on and warm it back up. So I really like those. Definitely would recommend them if you're looking for one to put in the tank this year. DKH 8 to 12, pH 8.1 to 8.4, and your salinity 1.023 to 1.025. You keep those right in, it'll be a really happy coral. Colors, like I said, you got a bunch of different corals that you can find on this guy. Green is definitely the most popular color. It's the one everybody wants. Whites, tans, and browns are other colors you can get. And then also variations of blues and purples can even be found. A lot of times with those white ones, if you put them under the right lighting, you have some really nice blue LEDs. You can really make those pop in your tank. Diet, now they are a photosynthetic coral. That means they're eating things off the light in the water. But they also love pellets and liquid foods. I love feeding mine pellets. You can put pellets right on top of them, turn your current off, and just drop them right on top. You'll actually see in the middle of them, his mouth will open up, and he'll slowly, slowly drag those pellets towards his mouth to eat them. That helps his growth, helps build a strong skeleton for him, and also just makes him get a lot bigger, which everybody likes their corals to do. Liquid foods are also a really great one. If you want to put some oyster feasts in there or reef roids, any kind of liquid food you can put in the fans and get it blowing around the tank, you'll see his feeder tentacles come out like crazy. He'll have a great time with that. Origin, now a lot of reports are saying they're starting to be aquacultured, so that's great. They're starting to, you know, produce them in a facility now instead of getting them from the wild, but they do originally come from Indonesia and Australia around there. Venomous, so yes, they will sting surrounding corals, can even sting fish, but it's very unlikely because most fish know to stay away from it. They do have what's called feeder or sweeper tentacles. Whenever they get hungry, they spread these out and they can get very long in the tank. And so they will swing around trying to catch food. But if they do end up locking on to another coral, they will sting the fire out of it. So it's good to make sure you have a nice open spot to put him in so that he can spread out and you don't have to worry about any of the other corals getting stung by him. Especially when doing water changes, I like to just fan some water on them. Just keep doing that, and that constant just agitation of the water will help him shrink up into his skeleton. That way, whenever you're in there, you don't risk the fact of you getting stung. Placement, I'd recommend bottom to middle. That's where they're most happy. They don't like a ton of bright light on them, so you keep them in that area. They'll be really good. Also, their skeleton is not just flat on the bottom, so it can be hard to kind of prop them on a rock. So the best thing, if you are scared of him tumbling down, put him in the sand. Just kind of give him buried a little bit. Get him a good anchor, and he'll be really happy, and he'll come out like normal. Current, I would recommend it being low to medium. Nothing too crazy. Too much current on him will make him shrink up, and you can definitely tell when he's not happy. 
because those polyps will start to shrink back into the skeleton and you'll just know, okay, this is too much on him. But you still want to have some current on him, that way he can feed throughout the day. Lighting, I would recommend moderate lighting. If you're looking at par levels, it's about 50 to 150. It gives you a nice little range to have him at. Putting mine in the middle of the tank with my Hydro 26s up at the top, he does really good. He likes it. Not too bright for him and not too low of a light for him. Tank size really doesn't matter. It's really any tank size. It's mainly about making sure that your water quality is great and it has plenty of food in there for him to eat on. Calcium in the water is very important for this coral, for any LPS coral to be honest, as it aids in building that skeleton strong for him. And also if he ever was to encounter an injury, having plenty of calcium in the water helps him heal faster. And then if you just want that coral to grow fast, put calcium in that water, make sure it's hitting the right levels. You know, 400 to 450 is a perfect calcium level in a tank that'll keep him really happy and strong. Fragging this coral is possible, but not easy as the frags take very long periods of time to grow back. And a lot of times it's hard to tell where to actually frag this coral. You're honestly doing more harm than good. If you're trying it, you really need one of those like fancy, you know, water drills that can drill perfect lines into the coral. At the aquaculture sites, they got these that can do it. But for me at home, I'm just going to let him thrive and enjoy the one bubble coral in my tank. And I would definitely recommend y'all do the same. Acclimation and handling is very important as the fleshy bubbles can easily pop and stress the coral. I've done it plenty of times on my coral when moving him or if he ever has fallen. So you definitely want to be very careful when trying to put him into the tank or fixing him onto a spot. It's definitely best to fan it with water until it shrinks up as much as it can. That way you can go up under him and scoop him and you're basically grabbing that hard skeleton and placing him where you need to go. Don't grab him from the top. I'm telling you, it's just going to cause more issues than good. And like always, when taking care of corals, you know, keep that water quality pristine. Make sure you're checking your levels like calcium and KH. You got to have those out for your corals to keep them healthy. Also checking your ammonia, your nitrates, your nitrites. Those spiking can really harm your corals. So you definitely want to make sure those are staying down. And with feeding corals, it definitely makes the tank dirtier. So you definitely want to watch out to make sure your feeding and your water changes are equal and out so that you don't end up with a tank that's too harmful for your corals. And just a side note, this is an LPS coral. So if you do have clownfish in your tank, it is possible that they will swim up in this coral and host it. So if they do start to do that, don't fret. It is normal for them to swim up in there. But if they are causing too much stress to the coral and you see it start to shrink up too much, you might want to move it in a different spot of the tank. That way it's not getting bullied so much by them clownfish swimming in it. Other than that, that pretty much hits on everything you need to know about the green bubble coral. By far one of my favorite corals to see. They have such great detail up close and they just look really nice when they come out in the center of the tank. I hope y'all all have a wonderful day. Please let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments or you can reach out to me on social media. I'll be happy to talk with y'all. If you have one in your tank right now, leave your experience down below. It definitely helps all of us learn and learn new tricks about taking care of these corals. I will see y'all later. Make sure to like and subscribe. Tell your friends about us. We are having a blast out here. Hope y'all have a good one. Hey everybody, it's Brock and today's video is sponsored by Dream Team Forever. Make sure to check out our website as we just released the first ever All About Tees that feature 30 fish and inverts from the series. Click the link in the description to get some for you and your family.